Ready to uncover the secrets behind accurate and trustworthy lab results? Dive into this MCQ on NABL accreditation and quality control. 1. What is the primary objective of quality control in a laboratory? A. Increase the number of tests performed. B. Ensure accurate and reliable test results. C. Reduce laboratory expenses. D. Decrease staff workload. Correct answer. B. Ensure accurate and reliable test results. Explanation. The main aim of QC is to ensure consistent accuracy and reliability in test results. It minimizes errors that can affect patient diagnosis and treatment. Increasing test numbers or reducing costs does not directly align with QC goals. Reliable results are essential for maintaining lab credibility. 2. Which of the following is a key step in internal quality control IQC? A. Participation in proficiency testing B. Running control samples regularly C. Hiring qualified staff D. Updating laboratory software Correct answer B. Running control samples regularly Explanation Internal QC involves daily monitoring using control samples to detect and correct errors in real time. Proficiency testing is external QC, not internal. Hiring staff or updating software supports QC but isn't a direct step. Control samples ensure proper functioning of lab instruments. 3. What is the purpose of a control chart in QC? A. To document test methods. B. To detect trends or variations in test performance. C. To calculate test sensitivity. D. To optimize staff scheduling. Correct answer. B. To detect trends or variations in test performance. Explanation. Control charts graphically monitor test results over time, helping identify trends, shifts, or random errors. They ensure that testing remains within acceptable limits. While useful, control charts are not for sensitivity calculations or staff management. Their primary role is QC performance tracking. 4. What does NABL stand for? A. National Accreditation Board for Laboratories B. National Accreditation Board for Testing and Calibration Laboratories C. National Authority for Biomedical Laboratories D. National Association for Laboratory Standards Correct answer B. National Accreditation Board for Testing and Calibration Laboratories Explanation NABL is a government-authorized body that accredits laboratories for testing and calibration as per international standards, ensuring reliability and competence. 5. What is the main benefit of NABIL accreditation for laboratories? A. Financial incentives B. Improved international recognition and reliability C. Reduced workload D. Increased staff wages Correct answer B. Improved international recognition and reliability Explanation NABL accreditation provides credibility and ensures laboratories meet global standards, enhancing their recognition and reliability for stakeholders. 6. What does a high standard deviation in QC results indicate? A. High precision B. Low accuracy C. High variability in data D. No significant error Correct answer C. High variability in data Explanation A high standard deviation suggests that repeated test results show significant variation. This indicates low precision, requiring corrective action. Accuracy refers to closeness to the true value, which may or may not be affected. QC aims to minimize variability. 7. What is a Levy Jennings chart used for? A. Calibrating laboratory equipment. B. Monitoring quality control data. C. Verifying patient reports. D. Managing laboratory inventory. Correct answer. B. Monitoring quality control data. Explanation. Levy Jennings charts plot QC data points against control limits to identify deviations. They visually represent trends and shifts in test performance. Calibration is separate from monitoring, and inventory management isn't relevant here. It's a key QC tool. 8. What is a control sample? A. A patient sample with unknown results. B. A sample with a known value used to monitor accuracy. C. A sample tested only during calibrations. D. A backup sample stored for emergencies. Correct answer. B. A sample with a known value used to monitor accuracy. Explanation. 
Control samples contain established values to check if tests are producing accurate and reliable results. They are an essential component of both internal and external QC. Patient samples or backup samples don't serve this purpose directly. 9. What does the term precision in QC mean? A. Correctness of test results B. Consistency of repeated test results C. Compliance with regulatory standards D. Efficiency of test methods Correct answer B. Consistency of repeated test results Explanation Precision refers to obtaining similar results when a test is repeated under the same conditions. It does not guarantee correctness, accuracy, but indicates reliability. Regulatory compliance and efficiency are broader aspects of lab operations. 10. How often must a laboratory undergo reassessment for NABL accreditation? A. Every year B. Every two years C. Every three years D. Every five years correct answer. C. Every three years explanation. NABL accreditation is valid for three years, after which the laboratory must undergo reassessment to ensure continued compliance with standards. 11. What is the main purpose of Westgard rules in QC? A. Standardizing sample collection. B. Interpreting QC data to detect errors. C. Calibrating laboratory equipment. D. Optimizing laboratory workflow. Correct answer. B. Interpreting QC data to detect errors. Explanation. Westgard rules provide statistical criteria for detecting QC issues like trends, shifts, or random errors. These rules help decide whether to accept or reject test runs. Sample collection and workflow optimization are unrelated to Westgard rules. 12. Which material is commonly used for external quality assessment? EQA. A. Patient samples B. Proficiency testing samples C. Reagent blanks D. Control charts. Correct answer B. Proficiency testing samples. Explanation. Proficiency testing samples with known reference values are used in EQA to compare lab performance externally. These materials help assess accuracy and consistency across different laboratories. Patient samples or reagent blanks do not serve this purpose. 13. What does bias indicate in QC? A. Random variation in test results. B. Difference between observed and true values. C. Increased sensitivity of the test. D. Frequency of test errors. Correct answer. B. Difference between observed and true values. Explanation. Bias is a measure of accuracy, reflecting how far the test results deviate from the true value. Random variation relates to precision, not bias. Sensitivity and error frequency are unrelated to this definition. 14. What is the recommended action if QC results fall outside the acceptable range? A. Report the results with a disclaimer. B. Repeat the test with a fresh sample. C. Investigate the cause and rectify the issue. D. Adjust the results manually. Correct answer. C. Investigate the cause and rectify the issue. Explanation. When QC results exceed acceptable limits, the issue must be identified and resolved before further testing. Reporting or manual adjustment without correction could compromise test reliability. Retesting without addressing the root cause is inadequate. 15. What is the role of calibration in QC? A. Verifying the accuracy of test methods. B. Detecting trends in QC data. C. Eliminating random errors. D. Generating proficiency test samples. Correct answer. A. Verifying the accuracy of test methods. Explanation. Calibration ensures that equipment provides accurate results by comparing them to a standard. It does not eliminate random errors, but establishes baseline accuracy. Detecting trends or proficiency testing is not its primary role. 16. Which phase of testing is most prone to errors? A. Pre-analytical phase. B. Analytical phase. C. Post-analytical phase. D. Quality assurance phase. Correct answer. A. Pre-analytical phase. Explanation. The pre-analytical phase, including sample collection labeling and transport accounts for most errors in laboratory testing. While the analytical phase is crucial, it is better controlled through QC measures. Post-analytical errors are less frequent. 17. 
NABEL accreditation is based on which international standard for testing and calibration laboratories? A. ISO 9001B, ISO IEC 17025C, ISO 11189D, ISO 14001, correct answer. B. ISO IEC 17025. Explanation. ISO IEC 17025 applies to testing and calibration laboratories. Medical labs specifically follow ISO 15189, while ISO 9001 is for general quality management. 19. What is the purpose of a delta check in QC? A. Detecting random errors in test runs. B. Comparing current results to previous results for the same patient. C. Ensuring reagent quality. D. Monitoring calibration stability. Correct answer. B. Comparing current results to previous results for the same patient. Explanation. Delta checks identify discrepancies by comparing a patient's current test results to previous values, ensuring clinical consistency. This QC tool helps catch errors like sample mix-ups or instrument issues. It doesn't monitor reagents or calibrations directly. 20. What is the term for continuous monitoring and improvement of laboratory quality? A. Internal quality control. B. Quality assurance. C. External proficiency testing. D. Preventive maintenance. Correct answer. B. Quality assurance. Explanation. Quality assurance is a comprehensive process that includes QC, proficiency testing, and continual improvement of lab operations. It ensures all phases of testing meet quality standards. QC is a subset of QA, focusing on specific test controls. So, what's your score out of 20? Share it with us. And don't forget to check out our full MCQ playlist on various subjects to keep testing your knowledge.